guys and welcome to our mini little homestead it's been about eight nine days since we've closed on the property and uh, needless to say it's been uh, pretty tough moving everything here uh, uh, my legs and my hips are killing me and I'll get into that in the end of this video about backpacking and stuff but anyway I just want to briefly uh, go over everything we have here and what we're going to do and what our plans are for this piece of property. I'm really excited. I really love it and uh, hope things work out the way I plan. So let's go through some of this stuff. Hey, check out the barn back here. Oh, by the way, we have two acres here, but we are right next to uh, our neighbor over here who has 160 acres and it's mostly grazing and uh, a lot of uh, I guess hay and stuff that they use for cattle across the street this way um, there's horses and steers and I'll get into all that just later. a quick rundown give you a 360 here of the house uh, we got our propane up there it's a uh, hundred gallon that goes to a gas fireplace um, behind here and I'll show you this more when we get over there but it's a what is that 30 by 20 maybe it's a little larger i don't know but it's a beautiful metal shed uh down here we have another really nice large shed with on the left side of it we will be raising quail and on the right side of it we'll be raising chickens now the quail we're going to be raising will be for a meat stock and the chickens will only have about six of those and they'll be for eggs only. All up and down the property, let me zoom out a little here. All up and down the property here, um, all these little trees that you see are fruit trees. We've got plum, pear, a cherry tree, two apple trees, uh, two or three peach trees, and a couple ornamental uh, trees that are like Japanese maples and some other flowering trees we have back here but we have a probably a good 10 to 15 fruit trees back here that are in their early stages he the previous owner has had them here now for uh, I don't know going on the three years so uh, these that tree there's an apple tree and that tree there's an apple tree and next year not this ain't the time to do it now but uh, during the winter, I will be pruning all these, fertilizing them, and getting them back in shape. I'm walking downhill to the bottom of this property. I want to point out where my garden's going to be. The garden's going to be about, and it's tiered down as I'm walking here. It's tiered down to where it levels out right here. And uh, let me show you how this works here. The garden is going to be about 20 feet across this way and it's going to go up a good 40 feet that way um, all along this edge here down here i'll show there are tomatoes there now and we have been harvesting them but there's a whole bunch of weeds growing in them and uh, he didn't really uh, finish doing what he was going to do here but these are all mound up i'm going to come in here and retill all of this over the winter uh, get it all uh, really loamed up and uh, probably I don't know what my type of what my planning is going to be but I'm going to have peppers cucumbers I'm going to have some corn for the for the chickens and quail uh, definitely tomatoes of different types uh, you name it radishes uh, eggplant things that we eat uh, we're going to be growing all in here and it's going to be quite a uh, an effort on my part because I haven't done that and so we have to get a really good tiller to come back here and get this dug up back here there's all woods and it's pretty thick woods and I haven't seen them come up here yet but I'm afraid there are some deer I know there's coyotes back here and I know there's rabbits back here so I'm gonna have to fence this all off and uh, keep the critters out so anyway this will season, be my goal. but let me see if you can spot a pepper there but these are all different types of uh, habaneros uh, pretty sure there's some uh, Cal Carolina Reapers in there I mean look at, the, look at these right here they're all some big
Over here is where he had his tomatoes. There's still some tomatoes in here. Uh, there's still some buds on top. I picked out a lot of them. We probably have baskets of these tomatoes still. Got in some here. tomatoes there? Yeah. yeah right. We're working around the weeds because we haven't been here to take care of these plants, but we're finding them. We're finding some. They're all over. I'm t every <laughs> night we're getting about five or six of these uh, tomato plants. They haven't been cared for, but. No, all those things you see sticking up are weeds, but you know. We'll uh, stake up a few of these and uh, get our last bit of harvest out of them, but should be good for the next month. We'll have plenty this of tomatoes. This is the area behind the garden. Goes down into the woods. I'm not 100% sure. I'm not real good on trees, but I know there's oaks back here, probably elm. I'm not sure what else. Uh, he left piles of debris here and stuff that I'm going to have removed, taken out of here. The uh, some more fruit trees down here. Some old logs and stuff that I need to get out of here. And a big old log. I'm going to have to hire somebody to take that out or I'll just clear everything out around it and make use of it because we are going to be getting little logs, drilling them out, infusing them with a mycelium of shiitake and oyster mushrooms just to grow back here. But there's an opening right there through the fence back into the trees. This is looking from the back all the way up to the property, all along the fence. I just noticed some more green tomatoes down there. I'll have to come down and get that. Nothing like fried green tomatoes, right? Find that one shed. There's a whole area out here. What I'm going to do is I'm going to start off with one tier of a compost and eventually have a three-tier compost where I'll have new stuff and where it's second one where it's, where it's been broken down and the third one where it'll be able to spread it out. It's going to be a while before I can get enough compost to handle that garden. But I'm going to get started also on Also on this garden right here, right in this area, uh, since we don't have well water down here, I got a, I'm going to call a well company this week and just dig, see how shallow of a well, even if it's a manual hand pump one uh, or a sand point type of well, just to get it in there, just to have uh, water for the garden and for the quail and chicken. Let me show you where the quail are going to go. This is all going to be cleaned out and fixed up and all that, but but the roof is good. Uh, this is all level in here, so we're going to build our cages for the quail all along the top here. They don't need um, big open spaces like uh, chickens do. They pretty much just stay in a, they don't like them more than 12 inches high, so so that's where the quail are. We're probably going to start out with about 40 to 60 quail. Uh, we have to incubate them and uh, we buy the eggs and uh, incubate them over time. So they will be our meat stock. Of Some of the logs we're going to be doing, uh, we're going to be doing quite a few of these, laying them back by those logs in the shade uh, for mushrooms. One is oysters and the other is, uh, yeah, other side of this shed. He had a line going down here. So he had to, actually had a dog in here. And, uh, but what a perfect chicken coop is going to be. Where this little clothesline thing is, we're going to close, not close it in, but screen this in here so they kind of free range out there. And this opens up where they can go into that section. I'll put a, their dust bathe bath over here. I'll have all hay down in here. I'll have a place inside where they can roost, lay eggs. I said there was a dog, dogs in here, but there's numerous entryway. I've got to fix this part of the fence here because critters could get in at them. And, and an AC there for his dog. <laughs> So that's going to be cleaned up. It's a mess right now. It's, it's all dirty. Uh, but then going through, there's an opening going into 
can see where dog hair is and stuff. But they can go up there, and uh, this is where they'll roost. Get that AC out of here. And uh, that's where, we'll, on the other side, we'll pull the thing down, be able to hopefully harvest our eggs there. And uh, this is where they can come in, get out of the weather. And so this is where our, our egg farm is going to be. Like I said, we're probably only going to have about six varieties of uh, chickens here. No roosters if we Stepping help. back from that, where the, the chicken coop's going to be, the quail here. This is a really large, our third shed. And uh, this thing's monster too. I'm going to keep all my uh, garden equipment in here, hoses, all sorts of stuff. Everything to do with the chickens and quail and the garden. So this was an extra added bonus. And this doesn't have electric right now, but I'm going to do that myself. I am going to take electric from that barn and I'm going to put some uh, underground feeder all the way down until I uh, right up to the there and I'll put a, a couple outlets inside there and that way we'll have have electricity this there. barn call it a barn it's a big giant metal shed but I like calling it a barn so walking up from this shed up to my barn has a separate door here with a lock on it. These are all the boxes. We gotta bring these to the uh, landfill tomorrow, crush them and get them out. We're semi, we're semi organized in here. Uh, Nancy and I have been working on this this morning. She's gonna use this for her gardening area. Uh, I'm gonna use this whole section over here. These bins are all my back, these are, these are all tents. There's like eight tents there <laughs> and backpack and stuff. Uh, you name it. Everything I use for the van. Uh, we got a little window here with a screen. A little worktop there. A little work area here. Uh, I'm going to be building more tables in here just to put my tools. And he left all these drawers. So I've been uh, filling these up with all sorts of stuff. The uh, whole shed barn has electric running completely around it. It's got two fluorescent lights there and one there that light up this place pretty nice. I am going to off of this one, run it down, go through the barn shed here and run it down to that second shed. That's where I'm going to put that electric in. So that would work out good. There's all my canning stuff, my fishing gear, Right now, we're uh, going to put another shelf in the kitchen, so we're, as usual, waiting for paint to dry. The shed has, the barn has a uh, propane heater in here, so it's going to be nice during the winter. There's my kayak, the bikes, uh, all, all the things that we need out here. Over here now, this guy who's here was putting a sink and a toilet in here. Now, I really don't need a toilet and I really don't need this enclosure here. So I'm gonna pull this apart and uh, use that um, two by fours because I can have a lot of use for them right now. And I'm not gonna do the toilet, which is under that black guard there, but I am going to hook up the sink. So that'll work out real nice just to have, have a sink out here for us to use. It's a pull down opening and unfortunately Smokey does not fit in here she's too big so that's where she's going to be living there's a big back porch there on the, on the house and we got a three car carport let's take a walk around the other part of the property it's a good little walk uphill going up up this part of the property uh, this thing here, they must have had a umbrella or something on it, but I'm pulling that out of there, digging that out, and that's where our fire pit's going to go. So we can sit out here this winter and fall, make a nice fire, and look out over all this beautiful property here. 
There's some maple trees all along the fence line. He put uh, birdhouses, and they're all being used too. Hello, in there. If you ever go to campsites and all, you see these types of uh, faucets, wells. Well, this is at the very front of our property, and it's pretty forceful. There's a little lock on it here. I might lock that up. I don't know. Nobody really bothers you around here, but it's there. Our mailbox is out front, and I'll show you where we come in on the driveway. There's our mailbox, and all on the side of it, and on the front of it, our Clemson Tiger Paws, because if you live around here, you're a Clemson the fan. entry to our driveway. Take a stroll down there. And there's a three-car carport, which is plenty of room. God, I could put a small little boat in there, too, on a trailer one day. So, guys, there you have it. Um, that's just a small little tour of our little tiny homestead that we have a lot of plans for. So we're going to have a garden with a lot of different food in it. We're going to have the quail. We're going to have the chickens. We're going to have the mushrooms. Uh, we're going to be, you know, 25% self-sufficient. I'd like to get some solar panels up on that barn, but we'll see what that has, you know, in the future has to hold for that. And also with that, uh, the well in the back too, it seemed to me it'd be pretty important. Um, other than that, let me talk about backpacking. So I have some plans, hopefully. Um, I am this week, matter of fact, taking my uh, South Carolina real estate exam. So I am gonna be still dabbling in that for extra money in the area. But I have had a pull in my groin, and I've kind of diagnosed it by everything I've been finding out is it's kind of like a hip problem. And it it's hurts. It hurts. I've been out there, uh, you know, doing some trails and all, and I'll tell you, it's tough going up any kind of incline with it. So I don't know if I'm a candidate for a hip replacement. Uh, we'll find out. I hear it's a very non-invasive type of surgery and I hear that it's a very uh, fast recovery and can get you back up on your feet. So I am not going to deal with this. If that's the case, um, I'm going to go and have it checked out and if the doctor tells me that's what I need to do, I'm going to do it. So I'll probably be down for at least a month, six weeks, more. And, uh, uh, but if I can, I'll get out there and do some hiking. I mean, right to my right over here is the Foothills Trail. It's the, uh, from here, I'll throw the drone up later and uh, uh, you can see uh, Table Rock Mountain from here and all that. So we're in a really good area and I'm really enjoying this. And, you know, I don't want to have problems, you know, starting this out. So anyway, guys, that's my story. <laughs> so anyway, thank you guys for following Walker's World. Um, please hit that subscribe button. There's, there will be some camping. There will be some van excursion. There's going to be a lot of stuff going on here with the quail and the farm and the chickens and us rookies or you know, we're going to fumble through it. We're going to learn everything we can learn because basically, even though I was brought up in in the country, I never did anything like this. So we'll, we'll find out, you know, how much of this I can actually put up with or to learn. So anyway, guys, thanks a lot. Thank you for following Walker's World. And I will see you soon. I guarantee it. Bye-bye.